This story has my head spinning. An armed bank robber got off easy so that an unelected, unaccountable judge could intentionally circumvent a law passed by our democratically elected parliamentarians. Except that the law didn't even apply. So here are the facts. A few years ago, a non-Canadian Syrian-born man by the name of Ahmed Nasri served as an accomplice in an armed bank robbery. He wasn't deceived or duped into doing it. He was actually found guilty of robbery and possession of a weapon for a dangerous purpose. He'd driven three men to a Toronto CIBC bank. The three men, they got out of the car. Their faces were covered with bandanas. They were armed with knives. They went into this bank and they forced a teller at knife point to hand over cash. Fortunately, no one was injured. Meanwhile, the Syrian-born accomplice stood guard with his car running such that when the three men fled, he could peel away. He and his buddies, his criminal buddies, were caught only after he drove that getaway car through a stop sign and into an 18-wheeler tractor trailer. So fast forward to his trial. The Crown asked for a 13-month prison sentence for this guy. His defense asked for eight. The judge sentenced him to nine months. Nine months, that's it. It gets worse. After he was sentenced, he and his lawyer discovered a way they could actually reduce that nine-month sentence further. It was a month before the government's Faster Removal of Foreign Criminals Act was to come into effect. Now this is an important law because it makes it easier and faster for the government to remove non-Canadian criminals from Canada and return them to their country of origin because why would we want to house non-Canadian criminals in our prisons only if you are sentenced to to less than six months in prison in Canada, are you eligible to file an appeal of a removal order to avoid deportation? So the Court of Appeal in Mr. Nasri's case was aware of this and framed its decision based on this legislation, slashing Mr. Nasri's jail sentence by more than one third to six months, less 15 days. The purpose, of course, was to avoid deportation. Why? because the judge was concerned that had he returned to Syria, he might be conscripted into the civil war, except that Canada couldn't deport someone to Syria right now, even if it wanted to. Based on a 2002 Supreme Court ruling entitled Suresh v. Canada, the case involved a person from Sri Lanka, but the conclusion in the decision applies in any case where it finds that deportation to a country could reasonably be ex expected to result in the deportee being submitted to torture. This would include present-day Syria. So given that he wouldn't have been deported anyway, yet was still given a reduced sentence, what does this tell us? To me, this is yet another example of how our unelected, unaccountable judges are soft on crime. And is all the more reason why we need mandatory minimum sentencing. Because every time someone says we don't need mandatory minimums, let's leave it up to the judge's discretion, something like this happens. It is egregious that he was given a light sentence in the first place, but that the sentence was reduced based on a false hypothetical situation is even worse.